A middle class white kid in a well off no. family where people love one another to go, no. I'm, I can't wait till 16. At 15, I gotta just stop fucking dropping guys. Mm. No, I, I, right. I mean, I understand that. That's, I think that's part of why the book, what the book's about, what Mark wrote, and, you know, cause Mark says that. jmore.com, hit the Amazon link, pre-order. Favorite son? No, the good son. See, I always <laughs> get it wrong. The good son. I swear to the, God, the, the, I was so certain. The good son, the, the good son, the life of Ray, Ray Mancini. Um, by Mark Regal. How old were you when you had your first professional fight? First professional was 18. I turned pro at 18. Okay. And who was? Yeah, I bet you remember his name and I, I bet you oh, remember everything about uh, him. Um, yes, I do. Um, but I'm going to have to think about it for a nice day. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio. And, um, That's where it was? My, yeah, but, no, you know, we'll figure it out. No, I, yeah, I'm about you know, youngster. Oh my God, I'll think of it in a minute. It was a kid from Cincinnati. He's tall, 5'10. And, um, You're 5'8? Uh, Phil Bowen. Phil Bowen. Phil? Phil. Oh, Phil. Phil, like Philip, Phil Bowen. Yeah. Feel, but brother say feel, feel. Was he a brother? Yeah, he's a brother. Tall, lanky brother. And did you see a lack of respect towards you because you were like a white oh. middle class kid? They, no one thought this can't. This kid can't possibly ascend the way I'm going to ascend because I'm black. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. No one's had it as hard as I have. What does he know about? And then you come in and hit like a mule. Jay, that was the thing. When I went to New York, when I was 18, I moved to New York because at that time there was only two places: New York or L.A. My father, I wanted to be, I, you have to say, I wanted to be my father. I wanted to be, do everything he did. He left, my father told me, Raymond, he moved to New York in 39, cause he said, Raymond, if you stay here, you're gonna starve, like I did. You gotta go. And at, at the time, you know, there's two places, it was New York or LA, and obviously I was close to New York. And, uh, I wanted to do it like he did it. So, I, 18, I graduated in June, and September I jumped on that plane and went to New York, and, um, uh, my trainer at the time was Murphy Griffith, who was Emil Griffith. Uncle and Mill Griffith, the great, you know, middleweight, waterweight champion. And Dave Wolf was my manager. David Wolf was a best selling author, wrote the book, uh, Foul about Connie Hawkins that helped exonerate him from anything, any of, uh, you know, they said uh, Connie Hawkins through games exonerated him. How was they, Griffin related to Emil? He's Emil's uncle. What's his name? Murphy. Murphy. Oh, he was your first trainer. He was my trainer, yeah. Right. My amateur trainer was a guy named Ed Sullivan back in Youngstown. Eddie Sullivan. That's what he did before that show. <laughs> Man, I knew you. I knew he'd come up with something. I pointed to him. As and, soon as you said it, he uh, pointed yeah. over my shoulder. But, so, uh, but Griff, but Griff was my, saw me in the National Golden Gloves in 1979 in, in Indianapolis and said, look, you're never going to win no amateur titles. And I was so disgusted because I got a lot beaten in the sem- uh, quarterfinals by the defending national champion. Well, I beat this boy. I beat him up pretty good. And they gave him the decision. And well, let's I, go back to what Uncle Dan said. Why do they switch you from Southpaw to right hand? Well, because for that reason, you know, nobody wants to fight a Southpaw as it is. At that time, so now you can't get away from be, it. It's going to be harder for us <laughs> right. to get you fights if you're left handed. Absolutely. Be too many those guys were avoided. Awkward. Th- right. and for the listeners that aren't fight fans, styles make fights. Exactly. And a lefty, it's, it's a, a lot bad of trouble. style. It's bad a, style. Right. And it's like you get avoided like the plague, you know. Huh. But. Now there's so I didn't many really of them. That until, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Sorry, nobody wants to fight Southpaw, and that's why no, you, you couldn't get fight if you were Southpaw back then. Why it's very you rare. Southpaw, do you know? No, I, I still don't. Being a lefty. No, to so, uh, give you a little bit of trivia. My last name Mancini, Mancino, in Italian, Mancino means left-handed. Means oh, Southpaw. Really? Well, as we refer to a Southpaw, they say Mancino. How do you say right-handed in Italian? I have no clue, brother. Arguello. Okay. <laughs> Touche. Um, you brought up. Well, you brought up Emil Griffith. And you're in horrible rare company with Emil Griffith. Oh yeah, for, yeah. I mean that was that uh, was weird. Yeah, Gabriel was, Ruelas. Gabriel, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ray Mancini. Now this is something you're never going to outrun. No, no. And it's it's unfortunate that your run through the lightweight championship, um, you're tied to this for. That's just the house. Perfect. Big dramatic crescendo. Uh, <laughs> You're tied to this unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Yeah. The duck. Duku Kim. Duku Kim. And you're one of a handful of people that have actually killed someone in the ring. Or you, you fought and they died later in the ring. Yeah. Which I believe, and you'll explain to us, you actually stopped fighting. You didn't really. I, no, I didn't retire, Jay. I didn't, re- I, I didn't stop fighting. And I'll tell you what, for me, let, let me give you a little background. Okay. I've grown up. Well, you know, when, for me, just, my, when I was, uh, on a climb in my career, um, I was, uh, 15 and 0, make, starting to make some noise, and, uh, my brother had always been in my corner. 
You know, my brother was the first one to run in the ring and jump and carry me and hug me. And was he older me. or younger? Older. My older brother, Lenny. And uh, we were five and a half years apart. And um, he was the first one to lift me up. And, and you know, so uh, Valentine's Day, February 14, 1981, I, it was, it, my brother was shot and killed. And I was in New York at the time. And my sister called and told me. And um, so I flew back. And... Consequently, um, you know, we, you know, we, you know, we buried him that week. I went back, um, that's in the, that's in the middle of your run. Yeah. I was really just, uh, you know, I always say, I'm, it's funny. I said, God takes, God gives. Uh, he took my brother from me, but right after that, things started popping. Cause it was hard for me. I was like 15 old and I was starting to get possible TV fights and stuff. They're talking about ESPN, even possible, you know, uh, climb to on networks were starting to get I involved. I on ABC as a kid. CBS. CBS. CBS was network, right. Especially on CBS? Yeah, on the front of ABC. CBS was a network. And they were just getting, and at that time, 81, uh, late, uh, you know, they was getting, uh, CBS was getting the fight game, and they wanted to get involved with the lightweight division. Oh, I hit and the juggernaut. Rare, because a lot right. of, you know, people like to watch the heavyweight slug it out. At the time. And but, if you're a real fight fan, you know, the real brawls are you know, lighter weights. Like middleweight and sure, below. Is when sure, really exactly. Exactly. So, so at the time, dies. so he dies February 14th. I go to, back to New York and I tell, um, you know, my parents, I told them I don't have to leave. I could say, no, no, you got to go. Get on with your life. We got to move on. And I've been, that's kind of, I've trained myself through the years. Just, you know, I, 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 I grieve it. I grieved. I mourned it. And then I move on. You got to. You got to bury it. Move on. And that's what I've done with my life. Most of the things in my life. Who was that, the first fight after you buried well, that's, your brother? So as soon as I get back to New York, I tell Griff. I gotta get Griff. We gotta get back. I gotta get a fight. I tell my manager, Dave Wolf, get me a fight right away. Next, within the week, we had, we got offered to be the main event at the F- Felt Forum underneath Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah. But you know, that's that's you know, time. it's like right. It's just one step to the main to to the big arena. Yeah. And so, um, um, a great March for place too. The yeah, Felt Forum. Well, the Mar- Mar- Nothing's named cool anymore. Right, no. Named after a product. That's right. That's exactly right. You're right. The great, yeah, right. The great, place great in forum here in, here in L.A. The, the great, over there. right, right. The Olympic, right. So that was March 12th of 81. So they, I got back and I got offered that fight. So let's do it. Who was it? And they fought, I fought a guy named Storm and Norman Goins from Indianapolis. Norman Goins was an I older guy who had been Storm a... Norman Schwarzenegger. St- yeah. I, st- I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Or whatever. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. He's a sniper, man. He's a three-pointer guy off the bench. It's like Steve Novak. <laughs> and, uh, so Steve Goings. No, Starman Norman Goings. Norman what Goings. What did I say? Steve Isn't Goings. Isn't it amazing? See, I have not see, been punched see, How many fights have you had, man? No, really, seriously. The last name like Jesus Goings, you have to have two name front names like Storm Norman, Norman, Norman for Norman crying out I'll go there. I'm, I'm going to talk to your, your son guy over here. Me and him are going to have the conversation because <laughs> that's we're Angie. only two. Andrew's from Rhode Island. He's we, very connected. We, ain't, you we, your we, we, we ain't the only two men who ain't and, fucked us up so far. So Angie's a friend of ours. Uh, so what happened with Storm and Norman? Big puncher. Everyone thought it would be a bad fight because coming off the – you know, they didn't know how it reacts when it got hit. Big puncher. Uh, fought Howard Davis twice on TV. Dropped Howard Davis. Wait, 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 hold on. You gotta slow it down because people that don't know, okay. we gotta tailor this to oh, yeah, people yeah, that don't yeah, know right. the place. That's true. That's you true. and I in a room, sure. Right. So Storm and Norman Goings. He had fought Howard Davis, who was a 76 well, Olympian. First was Storm and Norman. Right. And he was a tall guy that hit like a mule, and they Very thought punch. this isn't a good match. But, right. And a lot what of guys. And I went out, and I, you know, bang right from the get go. We started warring, and wore the first round, second round, come out, bing, bing, bing. Caught him under his left hook to the body, left hook to the chin, knocked him cold. All right, time out. Yeah. Who comes out and lifts you up? It's funny you said that because right away I looked for my brother. And you know, and so um, it was just Griff. Griff. My, just one guy. My Murphy Griff. Yeah. No. But I, well, well, after that, my um, guy who became my assistant trainer to Griff, who worked the corner and came up, was my, who was become my brother, Chuck Fagan. Chuck Fagan is the is he became my big brother. And was was that Davis, the same Davis that fought Sugar Ray, like one of Sugar Ray's last fights? No, no, no. Uh, was that no a Howard Davis was, Howard a, was Davis. a stable made a raise, and he was on the seventy six Olympic team yeah. also. Okay. Right, and they were so getting a lot Storm, of fanfare. Yeah, Storm and we got to go slower. Right? Storm and Norman. Storm and Norman, you Goins. drop in the second round, right? Not, and you immediately look for your brother, right? He ain't coming. No. Mm. Does that immediately it, at it, that moment? 
Is it like the floor coming out from under you? I it just really it's a, the, the, a great, re, just a great sadness over me, but a great realization that it, you know. Like, you and know. that was yeah. the that was right. The you know, for lack of a better expression, the come to Jesus moment of I'm going to, I'm going forward without right. my brother. Right. 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 Okay. Thank you. Not problem. Then Howard Davis. Yeah, Howard Davis. You know what? Forget it, man. I just mentioned him because he was a he was a seventy six Olympian who was getting a lot of heat at the time. And he, he was, was on to Storm and Norman, and, <laughs> and you he was him too. and he was uh, he was on ABC a lot. But like when Ray Leonard name started out together, and he was getting a lot of heat, and he fought Norman Goins, one of his early opponents on TV. And uh, uh, he uh, fought Aaron Pryor. And, right. and, 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 and amateurs, you know, I mean, uh, big puncher, and he dropped to Howard Davis a couple of times on national TV. Davis got the decision, but everyone said, you know, this, so that's why Norman Goins became very, uh, so this is 81. This is 81. How many fights did you have in a year then when you were at that time? Uh, well, I turned pro in October. These days, guys right. fight once well, a me, year. I turned pro October of 79 was my first fight. I had four fights before the end of the year. Going into 1980, so, you know, I have four fights. So it's two four, a month. Two months, at four end of the year. Going into 1980, I had 12 fights, one an average of one a month. Average of one a That's month. That's unheard of. But I, was, I mean, was but tough. everyone in the time you know, right. also fought or, a lot more than it. It wasn't every, right. for the listeners, not like Ray was this crazy No, 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 no. no. So just I was healthy. I was strong. Like Sugar Ray right. Robinson fought more than anybody. Yeah, but guys, guys. Every two weeks. Well, you want to. Well, they were fighting because they were, it was depression. They had to eat. We, I wanted, I was hungry for. For my career to get, you know, I want to climb the ladder, man. Get that, get and your shot. ultimate goal was to be the lightweight well, champion, champion of the world, right? Because your dad could, correct? Okay. And so from that fight on on at, at the Garden at Felt Form, which was televised by USA Network. Now at that time, the USA Network was only regional, yeah. like New York, Jersey area. Yeah. Uh, wasn't national, I don't think. But that fight got me a shot for April second, only a couple weeks later, on ESPN. And I was gonna set, I was gonna uh, co uh, co feature a headline show with Vito Interfermo. And, uh, yeah, Vito, Vito, and he, so it was, we fought in Chicago. My dog's not a fan of Interfermo. Yeah, you can see that. And I fought, um, a guy, uh, named Al Ford. Al Ford was another slick, tough guy from Canada who was in the top ten. How could a Canadian guy be tough? Yeah, Come Al on. Ford. And nobody, and, and, and they. Storm and Al Ford. Storm and, Storm and Norman Goins. <laughs> Al Ford, tough guy, slick. And I fought him on, uh, on the, Two on weeks the after your last fight. Well, it was, it was March 12th and then was April 2nd. So three weeks, two weeks, three right, and a half well, weeks, whatever it is, month, whatever yeah. it is. Right, right. It's a crazy amount of time to yeah, recover. And but train. I just, I had ecstatic. Did you just not stop training? Exactly. You were well, always one of the, Jay, they dude, said George St. Pierre from, uh, the UFC is a guy that never takes a day off. Well, you gotta, no, you gotta take, you know, take three or four days off, then you get back to it slow, and then you, cause you're not out of shape. You're never out and of you shape. You never had a problem, like 135, no. that was your fighting weight, and you walked around at probably 140, and you cut for the fight? Yeah, that, or right, not you even know, that I'd go and have, eat, you know, gorge, you know, eat like I was going to the chair for a couple of days, yeah. and then you come back, you know. But, like, but what was your walking around weight? At that time, you know, uh, at the time maybe 41, 42. All right. So you didn't never had to <laughs> no. cut a ton of weight no, at with that time, these no. knuckleheads going around today. Right. Right. Okay. So and you're always fresh. Uh, yeah. Up no, to no. Thing. Right. No, so no. So you're always fresh. Yeah. You're never, and okay. never out of shape. Never right. out of shape. Never let myself get out of shape. You know, and people say, oh, you're getting in shape. No, I've never been out Is of shape. Is it true that uh, you can't have sex before? Did you ever have sex before? No. I, I stuck to that. My father taught Do I'm, you believe it's true? I believe so. How? But, they but say people, it makes your legs weak? <laughs> people will say that, oh, that's just a myth. A lot of, cause I know guys, and I know. Your dick. I, uh, it makes your legs weak and you go into the fight with a very weak dick. But, but I, I, um, your balls are lighter, but though. I tell you the truth. Very I believed light it. Balls. I believed it because. <laughs> yeah, that's how you cut weight. Get your balls nice and light. <laughs> <laughs> if you like that old Jewish guys with the second the old guys I see them in the gym all the time. oh it's just, yeah it's like you think you're at the you think you're at the Friars Club <laughs> put a produce bag over that old man nobody wants to see that we're the young hot guys <laughs> produce I'm, bag we're the young hot guys I'm in the steam room we're all the hot young teenage guys we're the Santa Monica High School guys I want to look at some you know what I think I opened up too much there so <laughs> but yes yes so anyhow so you're always in shape always in shape yeah so there's your question about sex no I never I, I, I cut out six weeks before Six weeks. But what is this? Is it what is for me? It was mental. I mean, you know, as they go because if you're having proven, sex, you're not th- concentrating on the fight. You're for not- me, I would, I would, I would, I would, I, I didn't cheat myself, Jay. One thing I'm proud of, when I went to training camp, I put myself in jail. I didn't cheat myself. So when I got in the ring with you, you beat me, you beat me, but I wasn't going to beat myself. 
You know, I didn't cheat myself. I didn't cheat. And I'm proud of that. Five now, losses yeah. in your entire – how long was your career? I fought uh, – I, Professionally. I, I, five and a half years. I retired in my – I officially retired in – uh, my last fight was uh, February of 85, and I retired August of that year. And I remember when you retired, it was like an emotional thing. Like, yeah. I'm just a kid in Jersey yeah. looking at Sports Illustrated yeah. and watching CBS, and I remember I was bummed out you retired. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Like, I'm 15 years old going, oh, that sucks, man. Mm. That's my I, guy. I, um, yeah.